Well, 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 the subject of this video is complex. It's playing fiddle music on the banjo. It's glory in the meeting house. It's evolution and microtones and modal music and frets. Oh boy. Um, most of the versions one hears nowadays of a tune called Glory in the Meeting House. It can be traced back to um, a recording in the Library of Congress. I believe a young Alan Lomax recorded Luther Strong in 1937, something like that, a good long time ago. And that's the old version many have heard. Um, on that same recording trip, um, other versions were recorded. Um, Bev Baker and Boyd Asher. Um, there were some other unrelated tunes of the same title. And they're all similar, clearly related, but a little different. And the Bev Baker and Boyd Asher's versions, the fingering of the third note is minor not Luther Strong's. It's much closer to a major. It's a modal microtonal pitch and um, one interesting thing is I've listened to all these old recordings none of them have a flat six. We now hear <laughs> Luther Strong's choice is something just flat of. It's just a little. And uh, Boyd Asher, it's. It's a flat seven. Anyway, um, so I think you can't always, especially when it comes to microtones, exactly replicate fiddle music on the banjo. And if you do, it isn't always the best banjo music. Sometimes some substitutions that align with, with the nature of the instrument are not a bad idea. It wor works pretty well. In addition, forgive my talkativeness today, in addition, there's a question of one is if one is playing solo banjo or accompaniment or part of a band. If you're playing in a duet with a fiddle player, depends on the style of the fiddle player, but sometimes matching the fiddle note for note is a glorious thing, and sometimes it's an annoyance. <laughs> sometimes more of a guitar-like accompaniment is better. It all depends. But this is solo banjo, and um, I did not create a, a tuning to play in E because E has no meaning <laughs> in this context. You listen to the absolute pitch of these three fiddle players from East Kentucky, it's all different. Although the fingering on the fiddle would be what you'd call the tonic, the center is E. But in terms of fingering, but the actual pitch, it's all over the place. I'm uh, using D, and we got my banjo tuned like this. Now, why have I got a major third in here? Surely Luther Strong didn't play a major third. Well, his thirds, for the most part, were a whole lot closer to major than they were to minor. And the actual pitch I'm playing is very near to the fifth harmonic. Sorry, fourth harmonic. It's not what you'd get on the fourth fret. It's very sharp and grating. It would not go in this tune. Let's see, we gotta get to see both hands.
lift up the banjo here and get a better sound. Yeah, but now you can't see my left hand. like that. Oh boy, I'm holding up the banjo with my left hand. It's starting to hurt. Um, now there's going to be some people watching and listening to this video who will not Believe me. Luther Strong, he played in minor. He used it. He used the C natural. I know that because because I heard people play it on the fretted banjo like that. Here I've got um, I've got the old Luther Strong recording, and I'll play it at a quarter speed, and you will see what I'm talking about. It's somewhere in the middle here. I hope you hear it. Let's go. of thirds almost got as low as minor there near the end as but not quite Thing, um, I hear the versions these days often going but these old Kentucky fiddle players they often did this East Kentucky diddle diddle dumpling thing diddle diddle dumpling like a Roscoe Holcomb's basic banjo thing <laughs> Some people are going to say, well, we do it in minor now with a flat sixth because that's how music is nowadays and music has to evolve. And um, the old music is not static. Um, one of the meanings of evolution is, is um, 
a species will, will evolve to well, it, it adapts to its environment, the changing environment. Survival through adaptation. Another way to look at it, though, is that while there is evolution, which is a development towards improvement from the point of view of survival, there's also the opposite. Um, I would call it devolution, but apparently in Great Britain that means something to do with the value of money or something like that. And I mean the breaking down of something, the destruction, the getting worse. And this is because people's perception of pitch is um, less refined than it needs to be to fully appreciate this glorious old-time music, which is so tonally rich with so many more than 12 tones within an octave. Just like just like the modal music of Northern Europe and the Middle East and India and the whole parts of Africa all over the world. American music isn't all product and it, it, it's aligned with the rest of the world and so are we. And uh, Oh boy, so much to talk about, so easy to become boring. Ah, <sighs> maybe that's enough. <laughs>